And happy Sunday night and good evening, everybody. I know it's a holiday weekend, but you wouldn't think we would miss a holiday weekend with you. Um, thanks for everybody joining us for another episode of Talking TSR. Episode number 34. Oh my God, 34. Um, 50 is right around the corner. Um, to my virtual left is my co-host as always, Rick. Hey, Rick, how are you doing? How are you doing, Chris, on this holiday weekend? Yes, welcome to summer. Already cooked yeah. some burgers, already had the slaw, already enjoyed an adult beverage, which means I'm punchy. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so re ready to go. Summer is definitely in full swing. It definitely feels like summer finally. It does. I, I was yeah. actually swimming today. Uh, oh, nice. The weather is very hot here in northern New Jersey, as you know. So yeah, yeah summer, the undeniable summer is here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And just to kick it all up, I decided, you know, next week I want even more heat. So I'm going to take a road trip down to Atlanta for a few days. So, oh, yeah. Wow. So apparently that's, that's apparently really hot down there. So, <laughs> um, so yeah. So a couple of quick things before we jump into our show. Um, uh, a big, huge thanks once again to Mike uh, for co-hosting three weeks ago while I was traveling back from Origins. Um, I appreciate it very much. Um, uh, so thanks once again out to Mike. Hopefully Mike is out there uh, watching at some point. Thank um, you, Mike. Origins. Yes, folks. Um, I ran into so many people who walked up to me and said they knew me from this show and from the other shows that I do and everything, which was really freaky when people walk up to you and say, <laughs> I know you. And you're like, I have no idea who you are. Um, but it was great. I met a bunch of you out there. It's the first uh, live convention that I've been to since... Uh, since the year that we don't speak about uh, kicked off, uh, so it was great. It was uh, it was just amazing getting able to um, you know talk to the fans again, uh, sell a bunch of five e books, just see people, talk to people, crowds of people, walk around the dealers hall. It was awesome. Um, so uh, that was that was great. I could we could have done a whole show, a whole wrap up show just on on origins, mm -hmm. but um, but we won't because we have another. Yeah, you know, it's funny, folks. I say this every single time that we got true. Excellent I know. All right, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. It's like I, I've been lying all the previous times because this is the best show because we are gonna talk about you won the Sinister Secret of Salt Marsh, my favorite module. All the other shows we were lying to you, they weren't the coolest shows, they weren't awesome. <laughs> we, I sat through Isle of the Ape. I sat through, uh, you know, all these other modules, uh, White Plume Mountain and everything, because I knew this was coming. Um, and I know we got two more offerings after us, um, after this one. So yeah. I am so beyond excited. It, it's unbelievable. It took us this long to get around to the Salt Marsh series, because I, I can speak, folks, uh, mm -hmm. on good authority that Chris, Chris, I love this module, too. So there's no pain involved in me sitting through this show uh, whatsoever. But Chris is truly a fan of this module. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, really, really looking forward to it. And you got to tell everybody what, you, what your, what's your backdrop there, Rick. Come on, yeah, I me. actually, I if you can't recognize what's behind me in my little window, I do have a salt marsh. Not only a salt marsh, but a UK salt marsh. So I tried to well, get it as, uh, deep, deep, as within deep. the theme as possible. Yeah, that is a that is a deep that is a deep deep cut. So, <laughs> um, so we are talking about dungeon module. You won the Sinister Secret of Salt Marsh. Rick, kick it off. Give, give me some opening thoughts on this before I start gushing about this module. Sure. Um, well, where to start? I mean, uh, great sort of mystery module. It was ranked in number 27, uh, yeah. Dungeons and Dragons module of all time in Dungeon Magazine's list when they did that back in 2004. And frankly, I think it should have been higher on that list. Uh, agreed. Uh, I think, you know, my first gut reaction to this or impression is that I think it's a great starter module. I think yeah. it's a great module for new DMs. The last time I ran this was for a mixed group of children and adults. It was actually the first time I ever DM'd my son in anything. I chose this module yes. to do it yeah. um, because I think the whole haunted, the exploration theme and the, the, you know, the haunted manor kind of thing. It's just so good. And it's great for new groups. And there's so much good advice in the module for running the module. So yeah, that's that's my gut impression. It's just like great starter module, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely uh, agree 100%. Uh, this module has really been one of the the more formative experiences that I had back in the day in the in the in the early to mid 80s of running modules. And, and when I came across this one, you know, I think everything clicked. 
you know, I think, and I think you already touched on a little bit on the, how the, the setup and everything and how just the presentation was excellent. And, you know, mm -hmm. it was, you know, there was, it was, it was a different module. We're going to get into that on some of the differences to some of the other modules. Um, first module produced by UK, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the UK office of TSR. Um, they even put in there, they had to put a couple paragraphs in the beginning, kind of explaining it and everything saying, now it's like, you might, you might be like off put a little bit because this is a UK take. And I remember the, you know, the spelling of armor with a, mm -hmm. the U and, and some of those other things. But, you know, and, and they were really, they were almost apologetic about the UK influences, but, you know, I never, I, I guess I never got distracted by it. And maybe yeah. that was because some of the other earlier adventure writers were very eclectic in their writing styles also, that mm -hmm. maybe that this, you know, wasn't as different, I guess, maybe as as, as you, you thought it was. But, um, but th this module directly inspired some of my earlier writings, um, DCC number seven, The Secret of Smuggler's Cove. Uh, the first individual module that I ever wrote, first uh, module that I wrote for Goodman Games back in 2004. Um, I think we have a cover for that if uh, Elena can pop that up there. Um, and then later on, once I was doing the fifth edition line, um, I kind of revisited it with uh, FEF number eight, The Eye of the Leviathan, um, just the, the, the ship part of it, if you will. Mm -hmm. and if, you, if you pull out, if you have a copy of FEF eight, and you pull out a copy and you take a look at the the ship there and you take a look at the the sea ghost in in this original module you'll you will see the similarities <laughs> um without a doubt um so uh, yeah so th this this module was just great and 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 i'm gonna you know this is this is this boils it all down for me what this module how it sings to me reminded me of an episode of scooby-doo and mm -hmm. and back in the 80s i know i was already in my low teens i was still a huge scooby-doo fan Mm -hmm. um, it was on like Saturday mornings and everything. And I used to, I mean, I, I almost had it all. It was always like a guessing game of like which monster of the week it was going to be. Um, but this, this module, even the cover, and I think um, uh, Elena's got a cover. I, I tried to find the best one on the internet as I could. The, the opening title page of Scooby-Doo where there was a haunted house and the bats flying by. <laughs> I mean, just reminds me of this, this cover. I mean, yeah. I, I have to think that the inspirations were there. Um, I believe Scooby-Doo was from the 60s, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it was before yeah. my time. Um, uh, you know, I was obviously watching the, the reruns and everything. But I mean, and and just the plot just spoke like a yeah. Scooby-Doo episode. And and in all the good ways. I mean, yeah, it's, it, right exactly. down to, it almost had an old man Smithers. I mean, <laughs> you know, it was just, you know, it was just, it was great. It was just beautiful. So, and but, you know, it's funny, Chris, when, before I knew you, you know, before I got to knew, know Chris, I read DCC seven or, or not, or, or I mean, uh, the, the secret of smugglers code. Yep, DCC I mean, seven, seven. Yep. Yeah. And I remember reading it cause it was one of the first Goodman products. Frankly, I read one of the first Goodman adventures cause it was one of, you know, one of the first ones out of the gate there. And I remember reading it and thinking, whoever this guy is, he, he likes salt marsh, you know, yeah. because there was such like a sort of salt marsh vibe throughout it that it was undeniable. <laughs> yeah, so. it was almost it was almost too much. I, I have to admit, I go back to it, I look at it, I'm like, oh, like, did I actually, you know, it, it was borderline homage slash, you know, copying. I mean, <laughs> so well, it, but, yeah, but if you you're you're copying a really good thing here, so if you got a copy or whatever or homage no. something, this is what, you know, yeah, what better. Yeah, oh, homage. Homage sounds like such a better word. Yeah. So something has <laughs> got much less legal implications and everything. So so yeah, lo love it. Uh, this this module again, I I believe when I did my top 10 uh modules of all time, oh, what was that for? I guess I think that was for our first virtual con. I think that might have been for Cyclops con. Um, and I think Joe moderated that. I'm pretty certain I had, no, I'm, you know, I might've had Ravenloft one, but I think I had Sinister mm -hmm. sea, uh, Salt, Salt Marsh, I think number two, I think I have to, I have to go revisit that. So, all right. So um, the, the chat, yes. And uh, we, we have, uh, I do believe that's Mike Ferguson in the chat. Yes, I, I think yes, Mike's I in the house. So. Awesome. So Mike, if you missed it already, I thank yeah. you already at the opening of the show. So if you, if you caught it, I'll thank you again doing an excellent job standing in for me yeah. um so yeah so so i guess right out the gate let's talk about a couple things about this module before we jump into the, some of the nitty-gritty and everything mm -hmm. um artwork oh my gosh mm -hmm. artwork um i went through and counted a lot counted of art 27 pieces yeah. of artwork and yeah. not throwaway artwork of where oh here's just a sword or here's mm -hmm. a, a skull or something like that um, all of them tied into the adventure. 
um, a yeah. couple of full page pieces, a couple mm -hmm. of half page pieces, um, just art placed in all the, the right places, all, all mm -hmm. over the place, kind of, um, and, and amazing. I, I just, you know, we've done several of these um, adventures, classic adventures that really were very art light that were just yeah. packed with words and walls of text and everything. It was so refreshing to see so much artwork in this mm -hmm. one and 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 just and and perfect where you could just show it to your players yeah um even the little it. pieces of art yeah um, i i know from memory in the beginning of the module there's like a kind of a couple shots approaching the house where you yes. you see kind of the house in silhouette and then you see the house kind of over the hill and then you see the broken gate and you it's almost like you're getting closer and closer to yes. the house via the art which i just remember appreciating because you could just almost just grab one of those things, it, you know, even though they're not handouts per se, you could easily show those to your players. Oh yeah, what, without a doubt. Elena, if we've got, if you want to show either the uh, the illusionist picture or the spider attack, I'm not, I'm not, I'm following along on the chat here, but I don't have the stream up, so I can't tell what you're showing us. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, if you want to show any of those cool art pieces, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I loved the. You know, obviously, when they were putting this together, um, you know, their art director and the artists, they were just in tune with with the adventure. Yeah. Um, and and it just and, and they, they just worked together and mm -hmm. just really um, amazed. I mean, I always knew there was a lot of art in this book. I guess I never realized just how much there was and how big yeah. and impressive the pieces were. Um, so uh, very, very impressed um, with with the artwork in this one. And a good size adventure too for the adventures yep. of the time. I think, given the actual page count, and and maybe that's where we got squeaked out some more art too. But yeah, I I didn't realize until going back just how kind of beefy this module is in a way, yeah. which is nice. Um, yeah. This was a good 32, 32 page. Right? Yeah, it had a, a gatefold um, yeah. cover as well, so you yeah. got two extra panels um, on the uh, the cardstock with the maps, which was awesome. So yeah. And good maps, good panels. So. Well, let's that's a perfect segue. Let's let's jump into the maps. All right, let's next do it. Because yeah, go for it. What what do you tell tell me about your thoughts on the maps? Oh my goodness. Well, I like all the maps for this. The fell in love with the ship map, um, especially. I can't describe how helpful that was. Yes. Um, because I think you know, there's certain areas, and for me, like the whole seagoing thing when it comes to boats and navigation and sails and I didn't know any of that stuff when I was younger, and I still don't know a lot of it. And having a functional ship map, that was certainly the first quote unquote D and D ship map I ever came across. Yep. And just beyond useful as a DM, because I don't even know what I would have done if I didn't have that map and the players would have said, let's go on the ship. You know, I would have been desperately fumbling in the library of books. Um, so yeah, to have that well realized map, and you could take that map now and easily use it, you know in a campaign in a heartbeat so yeah so, i mean so you you know to. just a perfect size ship you know well mapped and realized so i like all the maps but that ship map just blew me out of the water love it uh, agreed I, I i completely agree that the ship map was really where it was at and then again they used one of those additional panels of the cardstock to actually mm. show the rigging and kind of show what the ship yeah. looks like kind of you the know layers you know the yeah the, the different kind of, decks yeah. and everything to kind of give you a little bit yeah. of an isometric kind of view of it to kind of get a perspective of that which was amazing um yeah i mean that 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 alone the ship map alone was amazing um but yet the, the haunted house part two mm -hmm. was great it was a you know it was, yeah. a, it, was a, it was a nice it was a typical kind of a sprawling mansion kind of a thing but you know everything kind of made sense where all the yep. the, the pieces and parts were i love the fact that they um included a good amount of the furnishings on the map um and uh some of the the traps like some of the areas you had like the weakened floor areas mm -hmm. that where you'd fall in they actually shaded that in yeah. um so that you you could theoretically if you were using miniatures and using a grid um, and and doing like square movement, which was really not a thing back then. It was all it was very much um, theater of the mind mm -hmm. um, back in that day. Um, I think we were using I think we were using a little bit of minis at that point, but uh, just a, a fantastic play aid in that regard to mm -hmm. be able to see uh, yeah. where the trapped areas were. Um, one of the things I you know just the, the the tiniest of nitpick. I mean, I loved the detail in the module about how the tracks you could, and this was apparently before there were tracking rules because they kind of made up their own tracking rules 
Um, but uh, there were tracks. There were clearly tracks in the front entrance leading to the cellar and then leading to the, the bedroom upstairs where they were signaling the ship. Um, and uh, I would have liked them on the map. I think that would have mm -hmm. been amazing to kind of reinforce that those tracks, A, were there and where mm -hmm. they went. Um, otherwise, you're flipping back and forth. And that is not a big deal, again, mm -hmm. if you were a decent game master at the time, even now. You know, you do all that prep work ahead of time, and you know, you you make a photocopy of that map and you mark it up <laughs> with with the tra tracks on it and everything. I actually ran this uh, the haunted house part of this adventure a couple of weeks ago at a local anime convention for our 4-H, and um and I did exactly that. I marked up with the tracks and everything on where they went in the the, the uh you know as they were exploring the haunted house and um and it was a blast again. Great, you mentioned this was like the first adventure you ran with your 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 young son. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the perfect adventure to mm -hmm. run with a with a younger crowd without a doubt, but yeah. even inexperienced um, you know, gamers, role players. Mm -hmm. Uh this one's they're, they're probably not going to get into too much trouble um too quickly, especially the haunted house part. Yeah. You know, there's there's some dangers in there, but you know, for the most part, you know, they're not going to get you know ambushed by you know, you know yeah. a, a lot. Most of the, the smugglers are going to be, you know, looking to probably flee um, mm -hmm. as opposed to in mass, you know, storm the PC. So it, it's it's a great it's a great great start. Well, I think it. it lets you ease them in too. I mean, this is yes. this is absolutely my own way of doing this, but when i'm running things for for children or for newer players i prefer things that lean more toward exploration things yes. that are more like this module or or b1 in search of the unknown that kind of mm -hmm. thing um where the monsters are a little sparser and then you know the characters kind of just check out unusual rooms and search and kind of just get into the rhythm of exploring yes. before they start actively fighting a lot yeah um and and again yeah and and not and for the group I, you know, for my son and the, and the group I ran it with, it went really well too, by the way. Like it was, you know, we, we, it was a perfect night's play was to do, we, we got the whole haunted house thing basically right yep. through the end of the haunted house done in one session. So yep. yeah. perfect night's play. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I agree with that 100%. And it's really the, one of the parts of 5e that's probably um that's that that gets the least attention is the exploration part i mean they say mm -hmm. there's the three pillars of of yeah. of 5e the uh you know social interaction um combat and then exploration you know exploration was a huge huge part of these old classic oh, um, yeah. adventures and this one definitely there is so many cool little things hidden mm -hmm. um and if you just spend a couple extra minutes looking for it you know back in the day before dcs and perception checks and and search checks and everything you know it was all just what you described to the to the to the dungeon master what yeah. you were doing it's like you know if you if you explain to him enough of how you were searching the interior of the old um, fireplace for example you know mm -hmm. you would you would probably find if there was something hidden back there you would probably find it it wasn't always a relying on dice and 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 you know that's a that's a crutch that i think the modern gamer kind of falls back into because they don't they might not know better you know, yeah. oh, it's like if you missed your search check, you know, or your perception check, you're mm -hmm. not going to find it. Um, you know, reward your players if they if they mm -hmm. if they give you details on pulling the carpet back and looking yeah. for trap doors or did it, you know, and it, again, let them find it. I yeah. mean, it's that's yeah. what it's there for. And yeah. I mean, um, you know, it, it's it's you don't want because how many times have you done those things? Every you know, oh, you roll the perception check. Well, I'll roll perception too, and then everybody rolls ten or yeah. less, and then they know something's there probably. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you if you become a slave to the dice, then you yeah. know you're probably not going to be able to move the story forward. So it's so true. Like in my home campaign, I've I've I guess the last couple of years, I've le started leaning in the direction of I guess I could best describe it as directed perception checks, and that you know you can't just walk into a room and make a flat perception check kind of thing. Like I yeah. I, I I need my players, and they know this at this point that they have to tell me. Well, I'm going to come in and I'm if I say the ceiling's full of cobwebs, they might say, well, then I'm going to expect a ceiling. Then I'll say, okay, make a perception check. But then I sort of take that into account that their character is focused on the ceiling as opposed to them just surveying the scene. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, it's important. Um, I, I used to write a blog about, you know, RPGs years ago when I had time to blog on a regular basis. And one of my posts was called The Death of Exploration because I sort of, and this was like 10 years ago or more, but I remember kind of mourning the fact that I felt like that pillar had kind of crumbled a little bit from modern yeah. RPG products, you know, and I, I, 
I've always, as you know, I've always been a fan of exploration and in deep modules. I think it's, you know, necessary. It's a necessary pillar. So uh, agreed. So I'm, I've been running a play test for the last several months, um, virtually with a, a bunch of, they're all old school players um, mm -hmm. about our age, except for my son. He's the one young one. Um, and, and so we did a session zero and we asked, I, I asked point blankly each person, I said, you know, uh, of the three pillars, which one do you prefer? Mm -hmm. You know, which one, you know, rank them basically one, two, and three. So I know what kind of stories you want, what mm -hmm. you want to get out of this adventure. And I, I will hedge nice. it toward that way. Four out of six of them put exploration number wow. one. And I wow. was stunned. I was yeah. stunned by that. And and another one had it Surprising. at number two. Huh. So I, I was absolutely stunned. Um, mm -hmm. but I was pleased because I, you know, it kind of it kind of stung to me too. And it was it, it fit it's fitting the play test very well. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just surprising. Um, so, uh, you know, again, exploration is kind of, you know, it's not where it's at, but let's try and get back to that. Let's yeah, try and get back yeah. to exploration and just, you know, searching for things, hidden things and everything. Yeah. Um, and, and they might not even be, you know, important to the plot or the overall story, but they're just cool things to find. There's nothing like that player character that just, you know, finds that, that, that gemstone that fell off mm -hmm. of the ground or something. And that was underneath the, you know, underneath the throne or something and just takes a little covered with dust and just takes a little bit of effort to get down there and, and figure out that it's there and, and, um, and then reward them with, with something, um, you know, at the end of the day. So um, I, yeah. I, I love that. Love that. So, um, so what, what, what else, anything else? Uh, from, uh, from the what other thoughts? Module? Yeah. Um, I mean, again, this kind of maybe goes into the thing about it being a good starter module. I love the advice in this module. There's lots of reminders to the DM to play the enemies intelligently, especially mm -hmm. like, for instance, when you're sneaking up to the ship, you know, there's a whole bit about if you come up the ship on this side, as opposed to just, you know, wantonly throwing yourself in the deck of the ship and saying, here I am. And I like that. I love the kind of little five step or whatever you want to call it um, recommendations for fleshing out salt marsh. I think you could take those and put it for any population center that a DM wants to flesh out where uh, there's just a couple, you know, bits of advice of, you know, well, you can flesh out these, you know, the elder council or whatever, and then you can, you know, flesh out some key individuals and places the players might stay. And there's, you know, like a little list of things, but it's a really handy list. Um, I think the only other thing that struck me, and this was purely recently looking back at this module, is even though, again, I think it's a great starter module, there are a few areas in this that could be pretty dangerous <laughs> and yeah. uh two not one but two locations with rock grubs you know you got some green slime in there and and like i said if you if you direct uh directly confront some of the enemies and you allow yourself to sort of be encircled by smugglers or pirates you kind of be in trouble so uh you know everything else being said it, it, it could you could lose a character depending on how it's approached so yeah interesting you know yeah definitely the the, the ship part yeah if, if yeah you, if you don't do stealthy stuff when you're assaulting the ship it could get out of out of hand pretty quickly um and and which is fascinating its own part the the haunted house a little bit more forgiving yeah um you know if, if you if you're if you're kind of smart about some things um uh, for me, uh, two more things that kind of jumped out to me. Um, the use of magic mouth spells. Now, this is funny. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I remember reading the description of magic mouth and being like, "What? why is this spell even in? Why would an adventurer need this spell? Like, yeah. I was like, why would you ever take this spell? So you could put it on something and then like go and 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 yet this module really showed you mm -hmm. how it could be used from um, from an NPC standpoint, how you can yeah. actually give clues away. Uh, you can actually, you know, they even they even made up some fear rules, like when they mm -hmm. had the hideous yeah, laughter. Yeah, there was like, like an actually, optional, right? Yeah, yeah there, there was like an optional, optional fear, fear rule in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I after this mod, it's funny. It's like after this module, new new newfound respect for, yeah. um, for and they liked the magic mouth. mouth in these older modules because yeah. I mean it was in yeah. B one, it was in D one, it was in yes. this. You know, they yeah. they show up a lot of places. They do. So, they do. It was definitely one of those spells. It was more for the NPCs, I think, than the PCs. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but yeah, without a doubt. Um, another interesting thing: no new monsters. I'm very surprised mm -hmm. by that, actually. Um, you know, lot, there's a decent number of NPCs mm -hmm. um, and customized NPCs, um, but but no no new critters whatsoever, which was yeah. 
which was surprising, but you know, I don't think it needed it. You know, right. I guess you could have had something new in there somewhere. Yeah. But, um, I don't want to say it would put it over the top because I feel like this one is over the top, but yeah, yeah. Having a new monster would have real I, I would have loved to have them, you know, like some retro universe to see what new monster they would have put in here if they had done that. Yeah. You uh, maybe, maybe they didn't because of the the fiend folio when that was released. There, there was a yeah. very love-hate relationship with some of those critters. Yeah. Um, and and some of them were definitely on the on the weirder side. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. So you almost wonder if maybe they did have a couple in there because that because if I recall the Fiend Folio was actually done, uh, it sat for a while. I, I think that was published in eighty one, which I think this is the year eighty one. I think is when yeah. this came out eighty one or eighty two. This was so eighty one, I, I think. Yeah, so. and I, I think there was a delay on that. So that that'd be an interesting. You know, hmm. I don't know if anybody could ever get that story out, but I wonder mm -hmm. if there was originally if there were some some new critters in here and they just either cut them for space um or they or or just you know the weird factor or just they just didn't feel like it needed new monsters i mean it was, it was like such a staple though it was like one of the like you know we've talked about all the time you, you bought that new module that for, you open that sucker up and you mm -hmm. right to the back to see if there are any new monsters <laughs> i mean that was what i always yeah. did i mean right yep. to the back me too new monsters new magic items. maps and monsters check maps the, and monsters. you check the double m's with the new mo a module right yeah and that, that that often like you know was the deciding factor if you're gonna make the purchase or not i certainly didn't read the whole 32 page thing in in the yeah. store so um but yeah so uh, absolutely phenomenal uh phenomenal adventure the plot was was great you already mm -hmm. mentioned it the presentation of the plot um was was spot on with mm -hmm. all the additional um assistance to the game master there yeah definitely. um they definitely. just they just it, this this module it really sung mm -hmm. and and it really was a, a a complete package and and if folks if if, if you're not familiar with this one um go over to, to whoever drive through rpg now whatever it is yeah. drive through rpg or rpg now whatever local. yeah whatever it's distilled yeah. down to i'm sure it's five bucks i mean it yeah. is it is worth it it is yeah. worth it to see the maps it is worth it to see the setup yeah. and the care that they took with the setup and yeah. and then the actual encounters um and then to see some of the other things that um th these these real inspirations that have been with me since mm -hmm. the early 80s and when i started writing my first adventures and they were not anything good and, you yeah. know i would use that word copy in there for some of the, my pre-published stuff that i was doing as a as a game master thinking i could do this and you know and find out how hard it was actually at the end of the day so yeah, it's a good whole package not just you know a good yeah. module with a good idea but well presented so agreed yeah, absolutely so. worth every penny to pick this up if folks don't have it all right so we're gonna we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper on some of these additional things in this book as we get to our next section we're gonna actually rank our top five what we like to call the facets of the book so this is we can pick in, we can pick encounters uh but we can also pick mm -hmm. like parts of the book and and you know things and everything so i think we'll get into the the, the nitty-gritty a little bit more on some of these uh when we when we talk about uh these a little bit in a little bit more detail so um do you have an honorable mention Rick? sure um yeah. for my honorable mention i'm gonna just go with the natural cavern fight with the illusionist uh okay. san Ballet and the smuggler and the hypnotized ghouls um it's a nice cli almost climactic feeling i guess it's sort of climactic for the haunted yeah. house fight and um I, and I thought a cool touch was the fact that he's got the ghouls kind of hypnotized the old fashioned way. If you read the details, yes. they're not magically charmed. They actually talk about how this guy sort of studied more traditional hypnotism and is, yeah. you know, got them hypnotized that way, which I thought was cool. And, and back at the time when this module was released, illusions and illusionists seemed to be much more in vogue. And uh, I just, I think it's a, it's a cool villain. He sort of, in my mind, at least fits the whole pirate smuggler thing. It sort of works. I like the illustration. Like you said, all the illustrations fit. So yeah, honorable mention to the cavern fight. Yeah, de definitely. Um, I, I agree with you 100%. We got a nice full col full page piece of art for it. Um, and, and, and yes, I mean, uh, and I think the the inclusion of the gnolls, I think, was great because otherwise it's a lot of, you know, human, mm -hmm. you know, guard type folks. I mean, they're smugglers, but like, you know, a lot of sameness and everything. And I think just having a couple of gnolls there 
um, I, I think added a little bit of spice to it and, and just, you know, elevated it a little bit, just mixed it up a little bit. I, I liked it because otherwise you'd be getting a lot of the same, I think. Um, so, so I have an honorable mention and, and, and let me tell you, so in putting this list together, I could have easily done a top 10 list, <laughs> easily, probably a top 12, probably. Uh, there was so many things to pick from, um, you know, most, I already talked about a few of the things that, um, you know, kind of sung to me, um, and everything, but, but my, my honorable mention is, is just in general, the NPCs and, and, mm -hmm. and Sambalé is, is definitely one of them. Um, heck I'll even throw in the dead alchemists because they actually gave him a little bit of a backstory Yeah, and you do find his body yeah. and, and or you could find his body in his laboratory and, um, and you kind of felt like he was kind of part of the adventure a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, you have the Ned shake shaft, shake shaft, mm -hmm. I think it was stick shake Steak, steak shaft or whatever the name was yeah um, shake shaft ned shake shaft yeah i love like that name shack, but not <laughs> but not um uh, but not a delicious hamburger um so uh yeah he had the awesome backstory where he had the, the crooked merchant from the town next door over and he was the mm -hmm. plant and uh but it was all like convincing convincingly kind of laid out um on how like how they got him there and 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 why was that how they tied him up and everything and they actually gave him a bump on the back of his head mm -hmm. so i i mean it was just it, the details and and i would be remiss without mentioning the sea elf the imprisoned sea elf mm -hmm. and the sea ghost um and the pseudo dragon which were npcs the pseudo dragon was just amazing um because they basically gave you a paragraph of rules on how it would become a companion to the player characters mm -hmm. and who did not want to have a pseudo dragon companion um you know when you're like first or second level i mean that was just amazing so um so yeah so my honorable mention is is just the npcs in general mm -hmm. and the thought and the care in developing them and how they really made sense that they were there yeah yeah so awesome so all right so now we will move to number five do you want to go first or? why don't you start why don't you start okay so, you want me to start so, all right yeah, why not? so number five i'm going to go with the uh roster of the smugglers uh which mm. is presented at the uh, end of the module um actually did rosters for like everybody but they and they broke it down into the roster for the the smuggler the smuggler gang in the haunted house and then the smuggler gang on the ship um, and again, it was very Gygaxian. Um, Gygax mm -hmm. did it. Village of Hamlet. He always had um, all the the bandits were always like you know they gave just enough details to make them all different. Thankfully, these all had the same armor and equipment, except for a couple of them on the ship. Um, so that was easier to run them in a combat. Mm -hmm. But I love the fact that the smugglers got uh, each of them got like a sentence on the. Um, the trinkets and the treasure that they carried that just yes. made them different and in the main npcs sam Belay and 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 the uh oceanus the elf you know just a couple just a few little sentences on their their personality what mm -hmm. they look like just enough to make them shine and mm -hmm. stand out without too many details yeah um, i think the tendency these days is either to have no details or too many details um, you know, you don't need, you know, six paragraphs on this NPC unless this NPC is going to be around for adventures and adventures and adventures. Yeah. Um, so uh, just absolutely amazing detail on that. And I love the presentation of it at, at the uh, at the end of the module. Um, it, it was almost like it was um, uh, uh, like an appendix, but it really it really wasn't. Um, but it was it was it was it was perfect. It was, mm -hmm. you know, absolutely. I, I just thought it hit the perfect, the perfect amount of detail. So, mm -hmm. so that's nice. my number five, the roster of smugglers at the end of the month. Nice. Um, my number five, and, and you, you rattled this guy off in that incredible list was uh, actually the secret prison. cell with Oceanus, the seal. Yeah. Um, I love the way his whole backstory is sort of realized. You're you're told why he came here, how he came to be captured. You know, you're given his whole kind of background. Uh, you know, not he, he's obviously a potential ally of the party, but a, a nicely unusual ally, and and yeah. one that could they tell you can stick around easily for the campaign, and then only reluctantly kind of leaves. Um, and it's just. I I love the fact that rather than just kind of throw a human NPC, they give you somebody that offbeat and yet perfectly fits with the adventure. Um, and and this whole backstory, it's just it's it's uh it could be like a textbook example of how to introduce to me uh, an interesting ally, you know, or NPC 
to the characters. So that's my number, an easy number five is, is Oceanus to CL. Yeah, and, and he was kind of powerful. He was third level, third level mm-hmm. multi-class. Um, yeah. He had some pretty good equipment and everything, uh, but he only spoke Elvish, which was mm-hmm. a limitation there. So you had that little drawback there. But I loved in the room before his chamber, they gave the list of of the the prompts that he yes. would call out to you if he heard you speaking. Yeah, like I Elvish, guess good alignment and, yeah. tongue, or Elvin, yeah. or a couple of different things. If you yeah. mentioned a couple of things, so if he if he got the hint that you were good guys, he would actually make noise, and you'd make it easier yeah. to find the secret the secret door. Yeah. Um, but if not, there was also a little list on if they sound like they're evil, if they sound like they're more smugglers. He will he will clam up and he will not make <laughs> things a, a peep yeah. and everything. So I I love that. Does the details again? The details in this module that mm-hmm. the the extra step that they took with the details. This is something I I remember actually. I forgot to mention this earlier. So so while you're sneaking up on the on the sea ghost and as you're rowing out to sneak up on the sea ghost, they they took the the care to put a couple of extra little words and sentences in. Like the sails are black colored so that they're not white in the middle of the night while you're doing this in the dark. They actually said that they wrapped up the oar locks so that they don't make, if anybody yeah. who's rowed a boat know how noisy yeah. that is. It's like, but apparently they, they I think they called it shackling or shackle. Mm-hmm. I forget what they called it. But, but yeah, they wrapped it with cloth or something so that when you rowed the boat, it didn't make noise. Just those little details that, you know, the author obviously thought about, obviously mm-hmm. put himself in that boat, sneaking up on the ship and said, mm-hmm. wow, if, if you're just going to row that boat, you're going to hear that from 50 yeah. yards away. And I mean, you know, so I love those little details. So mm-hmm. excellent choice. Excellent choice, Rick. Great. So, um, all right. My number four. Mm-hmm. Um, moving right along here. So we already talked about this a little bit, um, but I, I think I it had to make my list because um, they had such a profound effect on me. And this is the maps, the maps mm-hmm. and the adventure. Um, and, and again, I'll go right down. You know, you have the, the haunted house. You had the the, mm-hmm. the the ground level. You had the upper level. You had the lower level. You had your dungeon. You had your cellars and you had a little bit of dungeon there, which is great. The, some of the little details on the map, that the fact that they marked the high water mark Mm-hmm. on on the cave so you know when it's high tide mm-hmm. the water's up to here when it's not it's it's all the way back to here which yeah. was again another very thoughtful little inclusion that that brings the setting alive um love the fact that you had haunted house little bit of dungeon and then you had a ship that you had to assault mm-hmm. um three very different locations oh yeah um yeah. and and that variety again variety the spice mm-hmm. of life um a lot of the earlier modules were Here's dungeon level one, a bunch of caves. Here's dungeon level two, yeah. a bunch of caves. Here's dungeon level three, a bunch of caves. You know, I get that, that back in the 70s, that was what a dungeon was. And it yeah. was the whole deal was the deeper you got into the down in the dungeon, the harder it got. But, you know, you can see that th- with this module, there's starting to be an evolution of, you know, it doesn't yeah. always have to be a dungeon. You know, you could have a city adventure. Yeah. You can have something on a ship. And, and like you said, that feels so different. And I, I honestly, I think the maps in this book surpass a lot of things I saw come later. Because I, I remember in the 80s, we sort of went through this miserable period where I don't know what was going on, but a lot of the like second edition modules I remember coming out from TSR had this sort of very plain looking cave maps where all yeah. the caves were just these super circular kind of balloon looking caverns, you yeah. know, that looked nothing like if you've ever seen a real cave map. Yeah. Um, and and it made me long for this kind of, you know, these kind of nice, clear, usable maps, you know. Yeah, yeah. And 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 yeah, well, Wiley the Rat in the chat, or Willie, Wiley, uh, that makes a comment, yes, that 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 the 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 house map was architecturally sound. It, it made mm-hmm. sense. And and it did. It was like you almost wonder if they took, you know, they they had a a, a map of a of a stately manor over in the UK somewhere. Yeah. Um that they actually, you know, kind of looked off of and say, Oh yeah, this is where you would put the bedrooms, this is where yeah. you would put this and everything, and just and it all made sense. And and same thing, like I said, those caverns underneath made sense with the, the high water mark and everything so really really tip of the hat the the, mm-hmm. the maps i you know we talk about this all the time you yeah. know like when we mention a module it's like what's that first word that comes to your mind or what's the first thought the first mm-hmm. encounter the maps are, are yeah. one of those first things that come to mind for me with this with this adventure yeah. um and that's why number four for me the maps of yeah. this adventure no i 
I can't agree more. Um, my number four, and I, I think we preempted it at this point, uh, and I probably preempted it myself accidentally earlier. My number four was the was the ship map. So it kind of goes right into the same because they had such a profound effect on me. I I hate to say I solely judge a book on its cover because I, I think I don't do that. But I will say when I look at an adventure, how the maps are done and presented and how understandable they are to me, how easily I can recognize where the stairways are connecting and, and just scan the maps and get a physical sense of understanding the dungeon what's going on without having to do you know mental leaps um that's very important to me and these maps are so readily understandable you can look even if you don't really know a lot about ships you can look at that fold out with the cross section of the ship and you can look at those layers of the ship and the dungeon it's absolutely understandable you know yeah. to me any anybody who doesn't even know a ship could run that um, and that's to me the biggest compliment you can give, you know, the adventure writer and the map maker is that they they gave you such a you know a good clear tool to use when you're running this. So I mean that's yeah I, I kind of echo your sentiment with my number four that that was my faucet that I really dug was the maps because going back to this and looking at this later, I always remembered the ship maps, but now looking at the haunted house maps too, like that I thought my God this this. I love this house. Same thing as I said with the ship. You could take that house map and rip mm -hmm. it out and use it somewhere else, you know, if you needed a manor house instead of making it like a dilapidated house. You could easily take that map and make a few adjustments and, you know, make it into some, you know, nobles house or whatever. It's it's such a good map. So kudos, man, to the maps. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Yes, 100%. That's awesome. So we, I guess we'll technically call that. Call, call that a crossover <laughs> ding yep <laughs> we gotta um, get that okay. sound effect <laughs> yes i know we, we need a to. crossover sound effect we do we do um okay uh so my number three uh a little bit of a broad category on this one so this is i'm gonna call it clues and hidden bits mm -hmm. um love the fact that this adventure is just chock full we talked about it earlier exploration 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 mm -hmm. there are so many little things to find in this module and it starts right off in the garden with the fact that there's a snake down in the well mm -hmm. and and he's got a little crack like two feet above the water level that he like lives yeah. in and all that now i always used to when i ran this i will admit i always throw a couple silver coins down at the bottom of that well who doesn't throw coins in the bottom of the well give a little bit of a glint give a little bit of a reason for stupidity mm -hmm. for someone to climb <laughs> down there and actually tangle with the snake so um i i always used to do that and it would and i'm telling you like oh my like you know 90 percent of the time you see a little mm -hmm. glint of metal they're going they're going down they're going down there <laughs> so before you even get to that and, and there was one time i even ran this where i actually put a secret door down there oh wow and actually hooked it up to the sellers because nice. i thought that was kind of cool nice I was like, oh this is kind of neat i like um, yeah i like that every group yeah. i i ran through this always messed about in the garden or outside yep. a little there's bit the before. giant weasels out there too yeah. which is awesome but yeah. but just really cool there's just so many little things in these uh, these rooms and again not important to the overall story arc but there's like hidden things in the in that they do the fireplace thing twice they do the, where there's a hit there's a loose stone in the fireplace that one's got a ring of protection the other's got like a gemstone hidden in it um and and again the detail um up in uh area 14 the bedroom upstairs where the um where they're signaling the lights out through the um through the window they go through if you in if you look at the windowsill there's scuff marks yeah, on where yeah. where the the lantern has been placed and not placed i'm like the the thought that went beyond that and it's like mm -hmm. it is just it is just, and it's inspired me when I've been designing adventures to put little clues like that in there. Um, because again, when you're designing these things, mm -hmm. you could never have enough clues. Uh, yeah. If you've got a mystery going on and something that the PCs need to figure out, you better have, you know, four or five clues if you think they're going to find two, mm -hmm. you know, always yeah. like yeah. double the amount you yep. think. And, yeah. and sometimes make them obvious because um, you'd be surprised at how, Sometimes the players will not catch it. Um, mm -hmm. But also, and the flip side, it's so satisfying when they do find things. Yeah. And there's, the, the, you know, especially that the rogue character who might not have that moment to shine where he thinks he has to steal from his party members to shine, but give him something to do by exploring mm -hmm. and searching things out. There's even, there's yeah. even a, a piece of parchment that's stuffed in a book 
a random set of books early on and the parchment kind of gives you a, a hint to like mm -hmm. you know that there might be another room down in the in the in the cellars i, I love stuff yeah. like that you, anytime you can tie things in and yeah. do a little bit of foreshadowing is great and this module really does a a fantastic job with that a fantastic job and those are good feel good moments for the players i think too you know um i mean obviously feel good moments can come in combat but i think it's again for exploration i think when players find some of these little secret things that have been tucked away there's a little sense of victory there which is nice yes. um, in play yes. and it just it just seems like it's the cherry on top um, yeah a lot of times and yeah. just you know your players will well, thank you for it. So that that's my long-winded number three. <laughs> I agree. Um, number three. All right. Yeah, I hit a bunch of encounters, I think, for the rest of mine. And and again, you named some of them rapid fire. Uh, my number three is area seven on the sea ghost, which is the lizard man quarters. Um, mm -hmm. you know, one word, pseudo dragon. Um yes. yes. You know, running into lizard men there would be cool because it's sort of maybe unexpected. Like you said, it's kind of like the knolls in 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 the the dungeon under the house. It's a little unexpected, you know. So it's a nice change of pace. But the whole um, you know rule set that's kind of given there that you know the, how the pseudo dragon you know might uh, get take an affinity to a new owner and pick some. Like you said, who the hell would not want to have a pseudo dragon? Um, and you get a nice little illustration of the pseudo dragon. Yeah. It's just, it's awesome. I, I, as soon as, like I said, I, I can't imagine any player who would encounter that dragon and not get a memorable encounter out of that, yeah. you know, whether or not it, it ended up following them. And, and obviously it could really change the campaign long-term if you end up, you know, getting this. So another talk about a good ally, mm -hmm. Sea Elf's a good ally, but the pseudo dragon, there's another good ally. So yeah, you know, just for the pseudo dragon alone knocks it out of the park so that's my easy number three agreed agreed and and again and the fact that the lizard folk are there mm -hmm. and the reason why they are there and mm -hmm. we're going to talk about this a yeah. lot in yeah. three weeks <laughs> yeah um you know this is the it's just an absolute it makes so much sense i mean yeah. so that that encounter would make no sense if it was three goblins you yeah. know or whatever yeah. And but the fact that the lizard folk are there and the reasoning behind why they're there and it, it yeah. might be a little bit contrived that why would they be there again like it's like but they're there obviously to give give a clue that mm -hmm. what's what's going on and um and that's the uh, really I I do I do love that encounter that encounter would 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 be up there for me if we were doing encounters that's probably my number one because of the pseudo dragon and the and the the aha factor of when you uh -huh. storm the, the 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 ship and there's all human smugglers and then all of a sudden you open up a door and there's lizard folk lounging in hammocks and a dragon <laughs> and you're like whoa things just got turned on its ear and but for a good way um so i completely agree with you 100 percent so um yes uh and everybody yes people are commenting about the pseudo dragon in the chat we love it yes guys <laughs> yes um um yes and and they're they're they're, they're talking house crawls now so we've coined a new phrase house house crawl, crawl i like it yes manor crawl dcc manor crawls yeah. there we go we're, so, we're starting a new line like something next week, the elite folks. would do yeah it's like you <laughs> go and out and visit a bunch of manor houses on the the uh the uk um uh um <laughs> landscape that that sounds like a lot of tea and cucumber sandwiches but um <laughs> yeah but house crawl though that sounds like <laughs> now that sounds like you're crawling in the uh you know the crawl spaces underneath so okay getting off topic here so uh my number two uh so this is another kind of a sprawling one and everything so and, okay. and i'm gonna call this the i'm gonna call this and 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 rick's already talked quite a bit about this and it's hard not to talk about it already but this is all the setup before you get to the encounter keys. Okay. The preface, the introduction, the preambles, um, yeah. those little lists, the bullet lists of here's the way the, the adventure should start because it's very important in the very beginning of the adventure. You're not hired by the town of Saltmarsh to actually yeah. go do anything. It's more like you're going on a dare or you run into the old poacher. Oh, we forgot about the poacher NPC. Yeah. That was like glossed over. That dude was awesome. I, yeah. I don't know why he didn't like have a bigger role, but yeah. Um, but anyway the whole setup of of the um the start of the adventure like you said perfect for that beginning game master because this is a little bit different there is a plot here there's a it's not really a murder mystery but there's a mystery to be yeah, to be yeah. um unraveled here and they give you all of the tools to unravel it and mm -hmm. they set everything up and then they even 
even at the end, they kind of give you a, re a, a recap, kind of a, a you know, mm -hmm. almost like an epilogue of everything. Um, just so, so well done. General notes to the, the to the dungeon master. Description as you're approaching the house. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they obviously knew that this setting was going to be different um, for players and game mm -hmm. masters specifically. And they really treated it that way. They didn't yeah. just put a house down there and say, go for it. And then you have to read it and figure out, oh, I think I figured this all out now. Oh, that's what those tracks are for. Yeah. Those are them going up there. No, they, they explained, they took the time to explain it. And when I say took the time to explain it, four yeah. plus pages before you get to the encounter key yeah. of a lot of text to actually make sure you understand the story Mm -hmm. the beginnings of the story like i said you had that whole preface of hey we're sorry we're uk and we speak funny mm -hmm. there was that whole part um the introduction which kind of goes into the fact that this is a trilogy of adventures but that this is completely suitable to stand on its own you could either mm -hmm. do just the house or just the ship but then they said however you won't get as much out of number two and number three because number yeah. two and number three really kind of build on what happens here so um so and i'm sure we'll we'll get to a little bit more detail so I just loved that, you know, maybe they spent a little bit too much time kind of um, um, guiding you, but I felt like, you know, back in the day when I was learning um, my DMing chops, this mm -hmm. was a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Um, it wasn't assumed that I knew how to do all this mm -hmm. and it walked me through it step by step. And, yeah. um, and I really appreciated that. And I really remembered it to this day. So yeah. That yeah, I think it's all good thing. advice and, and, you know, yeah, I, I, and, and it's a product of its time and that, you know, we're looking at 1981 where you can't just turn to YouTube or whatever and, yeah. and get good DM, DMing advice from somebody. I, I mean, you really, uh, I, I, I don't know. I think it was all useful advice. Um, I I've seen plenty of these preambles in my time I've read, I don't know how many of them. And and I think we all know there's some preambles you kind of scoot on right by, and then there's ones that have some genuinely good nuggets of stuff in there. And and this one, like I mentioned earlier, when it came to the telling you what to fill out on the town and and really holding a newer DM by the hand a little bit, maybe in a more experienced DM wouldn't need all this stuff, but I think for a newer DM there's some essential stuff in there. So I think yeah, absolutely necessary, good, useful stuff in there. All right, so where are we? Number two. Number um, two. Again, I'm going to drill down into an encounter because I got mostly one of the encounters for mine this time. Uh, you mentioned him again earlier. Uh, the bedroom, Area 15 of the Haunted House with our good old assassin, Fred Ned Shakeshift. Yeah. Um, I love this encounter. I mean, I think it is one of those things that rang my logic alarm bells when I first ran into it because I, I thought, what is this guy sitting up here for days waiting for? But but if you read into the text, they do go out of their way to tell you that this guy, you know, might have been hastily planted here, depending on words, you know, things being overheard or overheard about the party going there. And they're smart enough in the module also to call out the fact that thinking players who find this guy may realize that, you know, this quote unquote spirits haunting the house may be a little more, you know, human than otherworldly. Um, so it's all there, you know, like the, the people who wrote this, they, they called out any gaps in logic before I could even get to it. Um, I love the whole though NPC thing. I, I love the way you can play this guy again, can be a very memorable encounter. I've run this encounter many times and had a lot of fun with it and it's never gone exactly the same anytime i've run it you know sometimes the players are on this guy a lot quicker sometimes not incredible detail given like with anything else in this module where they talk about even how the sadistic merchant gave this guy a bump in the back of the head you know to kind of give yeah. you know some uh facility uh you know facilitate his story a little bit just crazy incredible detail you know all, all the hows and whys are provided in the background you know is given for the dm the dm there's no question the DM understands what's going on, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I just think there's so much fun to be had with this guy and how you play him and how he's encountered and stuff that that was my number two because I've it's always been one of my more fun encounters in the whole house, so. Agreed. Yeah, that's an awesome one. All right, number two. All right, my number one. Um, all right, so this should not be a surprise at all, but I will go into some more detail on it. So my number one is the whole way they handled the second half of the module with the mm -hmm. sea ghost. Um, the, again, we get the preamble again, 
Um, now the town does hire the PCs at this point and they provide the fishermen and the boat to get there. Um, they really go through a lot of details that you need to know as a game master, how the signaling works between the house and the ship, um, which way the guards looking out, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, which way you want to approach um, yeah. all, all these different things, how, how you, you know, they have grappling hooks, you know, how you're going to get up the side of the ship details on how, you know, like I said, I, whenever I used to run this encounter, this part of the module, I'd always say in my head, if by the end of this, if the ship's not at the bottom of the bay, the characters <laughs> did something wrong. Huh. Um, you know, it's like, I mean, every, almost every single time going in this, it's like, hey, well, why are we going to sneak on it? Let's just sneak up to it and sink the damn thing. So there's lots of rules about that on, on, on how you would go about doing that. There's exhaustive rules about how the ship will catch on fire or not catch on fire. Yeah, um, yeah. Again, four plus pages of material yeah. that you can look at that are details that you're going to need as a game master to yeah. effectively run this. Because again, first we had a haunted house, but that was kind of easy. But now you're assaulting a ship that's mm -hmm. in a bay. Um, talk about taking it out of the dungeon. I yeah. mean, it's like- And it's backed like, up by different. some cool art to boot. Yes. You're, to you're given that wonderful shot of them approaching this ship. Yes. I- you have several shots from interesting angles of them sneaking up and, you know, here's yes. a crow nest and here's this and that. And it's just, you know, again, stuff you can kind of just flash to the players. That's just so cool. You know, that exactly. just reinforces all that wonderful detail. Yes. And, and, uh, and a dynamic setting, yeah. you know, yeah. the smugglers are moving around. They're not just sitting in the rooms, you know, waiting for the PCs to open up the door and kick their butt. Mm -hmm. They're moving around, they go and learn everything. Yeah. Just the way they handled it was great. I mean, it was yeah. so intimidating trying to think about how I run this the first time. Mm -hmm. And I probably did a terrible job the first time I ran it, but then I learned from that. And the other, yeah. the other times I ran it after that probably did a much, much better job with it. So so kudos to the way they handled it. Yeah. Again, over eight, they probably did nine pages of this 32 page book mm -hmm. were just set up and yeah. description and preambles and introductions and yeah. kind of, you know, before you even got to the key of the dungeon. So um, hats off to their mm -hmm. presentation and how they pulled that all off. Yeah, great useful stuff. Like I said, I mean, we we're talking about if you're going to purchase this PDF, it's worth purchasing it for that, um, yes. you know, and, and you can send my kickback along anytime. <laughs> wizards of the coast but seriously i mean you know if, if you're ever going to set up any kind of ship encounter of this type um you could grab this and really run with it as a dm as a great example all right so my number one quickly because i think we're getting shorter on time um this might be a surprise one but uh my number one i actually really like the alchemist room i thought that was a oh, cool yeah. little I love little hidden kind of areas and it is a sort of uh, tertiary sort of area to the adventure. You know, it's not directly related to the smugglers, but it's creepy. It's interesting. There's a sort of weird little mystery kind of thing going on there as far as the philosopher's stone where the characters might be exploring and looking at different golden objects and trying to figure out what's going on. Again, you're given the background of how this guy died yes. and what happened. So you're, you know, again, like the whole bloody module, it's it's well realized. Um, you kind of have a built in reason why the smugglers just maybe didn't simply run off with all these gold objects because you've got these skeletons sort of in between this room and, and the other area. So that makes sense. The The danger every group i've ever run into this they go oh danger and then next thing you know they're pulling down the barriers and they're going right through the door into the danger so i i've yet to find a group that didn't sashay right through that door and end up in this area so yeah i just i just think it's a cool little kind of easter eggy hidden area that i love this kind of thing so that's my number one uh, is the alchemist room. Just a lot of fun, fun little yes. area. And, and foreshadowed throughout about the yeah. history of the house and in yeah. the other encounters, there's these little, little tidbits about it. And so that when you actually find it, if you find it, you're like, oh, hey, yeah, I remember this. This is, we're talking about this. So yeah, it's great. It's an excellent, yeah. excellent one. So, all right. Well, that is going to about wrap us up for tonight. So I hope you guys enjoyed a little walk down memory lane and talking about you won the Sinister Secret Salt Marsh. Um, Rick, 
tell every tell the folks what you got to tell them sure um as always folks first off if you like what you're watching and i hope you do be sure to give us a like give us a follow if you're watching later on youtube subscribe so you know when we've got new videos coming out and as always keep those comments coming both during the actual broadcast and later because we read every one of them we love your suggestions and questions and and, and responding to you our next show is coming at you again on Sunday at 8 p.m. on July 24th, later in the month. We're going to continue right, right through the series here, and we're going to go on to U2, Danger at Dunwater, and we're going to get, uh, you know, deep knee-deep in lizard men. So and uh, be sure to, yeah, so be sure to join us on the 24th when we go right into the next module in the series. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, let's wrap up with our pearls of wisdom really quickly. Oh, yes, so, yes. Um, I will jump in first. So mine is going to be about exploration, guys. Uh, we talk about environments and cool environments um, in your game. Um, put those little Easter eggs in there. I mean, if even if the players don't find them, the game masters like reading about them. So and and they love the the, the expression on their face when they do find them um, or or like I always do at the end of an adventure. Um, and we're all done and they always say, what did we miss? What did we miss? And then I'll pull out the map and say, well, you missed this part here. You missed this part there. Or this was here. Or this clue was over there. Um, so exploration, let's bring, uh, let's not have that a crumbling pillar as, as, mm -hmm. as, as Rick said in the modern gaming, <laughs> let's, let's elevate that one up there to, to right, right next to social interaction. Um, you know, yeah. combat can still live on its own, but let's, let's mm -hmm. get, Let's put the exploration back in 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 uh in in adventuring and in, in manor crawls and and house crawls and dungeon crawls and everything. So yeah, that's my uh, pearl of wisdom. Agree a thousand percent. Cannot agree enough. Um, so for my pearl of wisdom, uh, let's talk about layered mystery because this module does it well. Yeah, love it, and it's something I think DMs maybe can do more. There's such a habit i think these days of having the characters go in and know exactly what the mission is and what they got to do and you know this is the evil we have to wrong and you know maybe riffing on what chris says about exploration too a little bit this module really breaks it to you in stages you know first you're just know something funky is going on at this house you know something ominous is happening at this manner we have to check and follow up on this you know this poacher's account then all of a sudden you find out that there's, you know, humans in the house. Then you find out that the humans are smugglers and they're communicating with the ship. And then maybe, you know, what? There's lizard men on the ship. And this sort of mystery is broken to you in stages. And those stages continue through the rest of the series, as I'm sure we'll get into. Um, but I think that's a wonderful thing, letting the characters and, the, you know, th through the characters, the players uncover those layers of mystery i think uh there's something to be said for not letting the whole cat out of the bag at once for your players but rather let, letting them slowly uncover layers of uh of mystery or what's going on and not know the full story so that's my pearl of wisdom there you go yes excellent yep i i agree 100 with that as well so Excellent. So with that, we come to the end of another amazing show. We will be back before you guys know it mm -hmm. um, in a couple of weeks. Um, and until then, everybody um, <laughs> be well, be happy, enjoy summer. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Happy Fourth of July, folks. Yeah. Happy holiday. Bye.